Hello, I was gonna do this. These are my blue light blocking glasses that I'm trying out. I was gonna do this as an Instagram story, but I'm like, no, I wanna do it as a video because there's so much that I can expand on. So when people complain or they're stressed about lacking motivation about something, I try to tell them to reframe it to say that they're lacking self-discipline because motivation isn't something that we're always going to have and motivation comes and goes sometimes it's like what is what even is motivation like it's sometimes it's this elusive thing that we can only hope for and if we reframe it to consider it as self-discipline then we change the our approach to whatever it is that we're struggling to do so if we're lacking motivation to do like this morning routine or lacking motivation to show up to the gym or our food and stuff like that. It's like, are you going to continue that cycle and that identity of it is the question. And the reason I say reframe this self-discipline is because if you're going to just let one thing off the hook, it becomes a trend of, okay, then I can just let this off the hook and then I can just let this off the hook because that that chain that you're creating every time you lack the motivation is creating an identity that isn't one you desire, that isn't one that's actually getting you towards the person that you want to be. So that's something really important to consider when you're like when you're navigating your self-talk, when you're navigating motivation. So that that whole quote of when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change comes into this motivation, self-discipline thing. Now it's, I wanted to actually write this as a post, but if I literally just say, you might not be lacking motivation, it's just self-discipline that you lack, then that sounds a bit brutal. But if you actually take in all the nuances that may mean that, okay, so how can I, how can I actually succeed at this? How can I actually get the thing done when I'm lacking motivation? And I always say it comes to your environment and your habits. You fall to the level of your habits and your systems. So make it easy to win, make it easy to succeed, make it harder to fail. I always say, set yourself up for success. If you're struggling to do something. I always say it's probably because your expectations are way too high or you have too many expectations. So you're directing all of your energy everywhere or of your attention everywhere or you're expecting so much of yourself that you're actually setting your entry level, entry barrier level too high that you're falling short each time and then that's self-sabotage, that's putting in my dog wants to get out. Um, that's putting in that negative, that negative identity in your head. Oh, I'm someone that can't do this. I'm someone that's always failing. And you beat yourself up about it. But if you actually just say, okay, so this is where I want to be. This is a person I want to be. This is my goal. Cool. Set your GPS there. That's your sat nav. But you still need to actually get in the car and go there and navigate your way there. You need to be able to have those small goals along the way. You need to be able to see where the next step is. Because if you're setting it way too high, you're not going to see that next step. And you can't aim for something that you can't see. So set yourself up to win and look around you, look at your environment, look at who you surround yourself with and look at who you follow on social media. Look at your inspirations because if you're following someone who doesn't align with the person you want to be or with someone that makes you feel better about yourself, but in trying to feel better about yourself in a certain way, it's stopping you from actually getting out of your comfort zone. That's not actually serving you, even though in one way it's making you feel better about yourself. Like an example is the body positivity movement and all that other bull crap. Like people forget... Like, yes, be positive about your body, love your body, but the thing is you need to love it enough to give it what it needs, to nurture it, to put the discipline in because you deserve better. When you love yourself, you actually want the best for yourself. And too many people don't realize where they started. 
like the whole intuitive eating or whatever the hell bull crap that is, people that have mastered all of those approaches that they're now spitting out, they didn't start there. Someone who has no idea, no nutritional literacy, cannot start with intuitive eating and expect any type of results if they don't build themselves up there and actually gather the tools before they can do that stuff. Like, remember where you started, and that's why I always go back to that level with my clients, and I'm open, I'm raw, I'm honest with them about all of that stuff, all of my stuff, because... I remember where I came from and I remember my struggles and yes I even remember when I used to go to the gym and not even want to be there when I used to cry myself through workouts when at times I used to drive this was deep in prep because in prep when I was doing bodybuilding it was freaking difficult but I would drive to like a roundabout that was near the gym and I would just do circles around it trying to trying to talk myself into actually getting to the gym hey and not and not going home but like people forget how hard it is to get consistent at first and it's not comfortable and you won't always have motivation i used to dread rest days for a different fact which it wasn't because go hard go home it was because oh if i skip the gym today i'm scared that i'm going to skip the next day and then have this because if I skip it one day, then I'll skip it the next day. I'm getting comfortable staying home and breaking my routine. I could easily skip it the next day. Like, that's the person that I was then. And it wasn't because, well, it was then. But I didn't have faith in myself. I didn't believe that I could continue on with the task. But that's because of the way that I was brought up and I was told, oh, you never complete things. You always fail. Well, not you always fail, but you always give up. You always quit halfway. Like, that was what I was brought up being told. And because of that, that is what I kept telling myself. And we all have our different stories we tell ourselves. And that's why it becomes so important for you to monitor your self-talk. Remember where you came from and stop looking at the advice that other people give for where they are now in their journeys. It's It doesn't come down to just motivation. Because I'm not motivated all the time. And if the whole listen to your body thing... like. Blanket advice in itself shouldn't be a thing because listen to your body works in some some contexts, not in all other contexts. Because if I listen to my body when it's friggin' pouring rain and I need to do a run for a certain reason, my body tells me no. Well, my mind tells me, no, you don't feel like going. It's freaking pouring outside. But hey, I need to go do that run. And... Yeah, so don't don't take blanket advice just off the surface level and don't look to others saying, oh, I wish I was there or I wish I was there because you don't know the work that it took to get there. And by just wishing that you were at a certain level, you're distracting yourself from the process. You don't... Stop it! You don't look at the... She wants to get let out. If you keep looking at the outcome goal, like I was saying in the beginning, I'm just going to summarize it. But if you keep looking at the outcome goal, you're shortchanging yourself of everything that you're becoming in the process. The process is the journey. The process is the goal. The process is the goal of everything because what is it to you if you're going to achieve like this goal over here if you haven't become anything in the process? And what happens if you you have this arbitrary number that you want to get to or this arbitrary goal that you want to get to and you're not enjoying yourself along the process. You're not actually doing fulfilling things. If you listen to my podcast about adding color to your life that I did with Mark Zerati, if you don't add color to your life and actually live life as it is, if you're not becoming something in the process and working on your identity, like all the things around you, the dimensions of your life, your spiritual health, your actual health itself, emotional health, all of that other stuff. Does it really matter when you get to this goal? Like, what's that going to mean to you if you didn't become anything? Like, this is the becoming. This is where you go through growth. It's almost like, what are you doing? You're living life. You're living life. Look around you. There's, like, anyone can drop dead. Like, you can drop dead at any moment. You can, like, <laughs> life is so precious. You don't know when something is going to come out. Like driving a car is dangerous in itself. There are so many lunatics on the road. You need to actually 
realize that life is there for a reason and you want to enhance your life. You want to live your best life. If you're eating shit food all the time, you're going to feel shit. You're going to feel shit. You're going to perform shit. I think I said feel shit twice because literally like everything is feeling. If you don't feel fulfilled, does it really matter what number you are on the scale? Like you're, you might reach the number on the scale, but you're not happy. You probably just broke up a relationship that you were once really invested in because you were so obsessed with that number on the scale. Like there's life around you. Everything needs to add to your life. If you have like a very strict goal, okay, maybe you need to make more sacrifices than a general person. But just because you don't have such a strict goal doesn't mean that you still don't have to make sacrifices because you need to let go of who you were to become who you want to become. Because you can't remain that old person if you want to become this shiny person. You need to actually, um, I said this to someone, to one of my clients today, I'm like, first, you need to figure out who you are. Because sometimes we're living too much in our head. We don't even know who we are. Who are you? What do you enjoy doing? We become so focused on reaching this goal, reaching this goal. Work. This person calls us. We become a mother. We become a father. We start being everything for everyone else. But we don't know who we are because we've lost ourselves in the process. Especially us women, we give so much. You need to slow down. Who are you? What do you value? What do you love? What do you enjoy doing? Discover yourself again. Figure out who you are. What you need to let go of so that you can become. That's the key. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. I don't even know how long I was rambling for. But, yes. Have an amazing, what day is it? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mwah.